Daisy Astros. So, sorry about the audio quality. The other half of my Rode microphone, I guess, decided it no longer wanted to be my friend and ran away. Uh, I'm sure it's in that mess I call a bedroom somewhere, so I gotta clean up my room and I'll find it. Uh, but I'm stuck with the microphone on the camera, so I'm talking a little bit louder, so hopefully you guys can hear me. So it's been, oh, I, I don't even know, it's been a few months, I know that for sure. Uh, I've tried to make a video multiple times. I've tried to make a video at the Measure Marathon, which I did attend. I was able to get all 110 uh, objects. Uh, albeit some of those objects you can barely make out in the photo, but it still counts. Uh, I tried doing a, a video there, but it was just too windy. I didn't have my the other half of my Rode microphone, so it would have been basically impossible with just the camera microphone. Uh, and then it seems like for the last, what, close to a year now, it's like we get a rainstorm, two or three rainstorms a month, and it's always around the full moon. It always works that way. Uh, or always around the new moon, sorry. So, as you can see behind me in my backyard, I've got just massive amounts of weeds because it just won't stop raining. But fortunately, all last week was dry. All this week is supposed to be dry. I've got uh, Monday night, Tuesday night, and Wednesday night off. So I'm going to try to image for all three of these nights get a nice uh, image so uh, I, one of my dilemmas is that I have an L Pro filter but with the type of lights that are in Phoenix they're changing them all to LEDs so it's becoming less and less effective uh, so I'm going to try to go for pinwheel galaxy and one of the downsides is there's really no nebulas up that would be up for enough time for me to actually get a good image. So as I said, I'm going to go for Pinwheel M101. And M101 is about right there. So what it's going to do is it's going to come up in like a circle and it'll be up all night, all three nights. So I'm going to use LRGB filters uh, with my 163M, my monochrome camera. And I'm just going to hope for the best. I'm in a Bortle 8 to nine zone, so it's gonna be really, really bright. But hopefully I can get enough data to be able to pull it out. So once the, once the sun goes fully down, it gets dark enough that I can actually image, then I will see you guys in at the computer after I get it all aligned. I took the cover off my, tel off my telescope mount, off my EQ6R, and there it was really, really dusty. But, I guess that's what happens when you don't use it for like four months. But uh, I will see you guys inside when the sun goes down. All right, so we're back here in the in my room, back on my computer, and I slewed the telescope over to Rosette Nebula because it's been you know three or four months since I've actually imaged using the Eagle LE that I've got. So I slid it over to Rosette Nebula to do my auto focusing and my plate saving solving and all that good stuff. And, uh, wow, Rosette Nebula, I don't think I've ever gotten a picture quite this good of Rosette Nebula. Uh, it was one of the very first nebulas that I imaged back when I was using a Skywatcher 100ED doublet refractor with my Celestron, uh, oh, I forget what mount that was, the Celestron... Uh, the one a little bit bigger than the AVX. Uh, for, uh, GEM. The Celestron GEM. Uh, and it was out of focus. It just wasn't that great of a picture. And then I tried again when I went out to... When I went out camping, I tried again and I only managed to get... I think it was this corner right here. Because I was just zoomed in way too far. But this actually, like, I've got the entire nebula here, which... I never even thought about doing that. So I th what I think I'm going to do is uh, when I first start for the next three nights, I think I'm going to do some imaging of Rosette Nebula, get some maybe 10 images through, uh, through each narrowband filter in the beginning of the night, and then switch over to M101 uh, Pinwheel Galaxy. And hopefully I'll have some really good images of both Rosette 
and Pinwheel. So uh, Rosette, I believe, goes down in like three or four hours. So that's about midnight for me. So I will see you guys then when, when I get all the images of Rosette I want. When I slew over to Pinwheel, I will be back with you guys when I do that. All right, so it has actually been about a week. So I started this on, I believe, Monday night of last week. And it is now Sunday night of the next week. I was supposed to have uh, clear clouds on Monday night, Tuesday night, and Wednesday night. Monday night was completely clear. Tuesday night and Wednesday night had high wispy clouds. Go figure. Uh, and then, so I was able to image Thursday night and Friday night. But they had thin, a little less thin clouds, but they had thin clouds and but I was still able to image. So I got the LRGB combination for pin, uh, yeah, Pinwheel Galaxy. And then down here is my Hydrogen Alpha and Oxygen 3 of Rosette Nebula. And of course, I, I always have issues, but let me, let me open these up. So this is the LRGB of Pinwheel. And everything looks, you know, decent or whatever. But what's really weird is when I stretch it, like this one, I don't, I don't understand where those ripples are coming from. And this is after stacking bias, darks, and flat frames. I don't know, uh, this is the blue channel, and I don't know if this is because of the filter. I would assume it's because of the filter, because, I mean, the, the filters that I have, I bought probably two years ago, secondhand. They were really, really cheap LRGB filters. I think I might replace those here pretty quick. Actually, I am, I am going to replace them. But yeah, it's these artifacts. It's really weird. It's like a ripple on the outside. That one, I mean, I can deal with that. I can crop in really close. And then right here, on every single picture, except for the luminance channel, I have this, like, smudge right here. And I don't know why. So let's go ahead and look at the red filter. And the red filter looks pretty good. And there's no rippling. You still have the smudge here. But there's no rippling or anything. You can see there's a lot of light pollution. Then you have the green, which also looks pretty good. I mean, you have the little darker parts up here. And the smudge right there. But then I get to the luminance filter. And the luminance filter is what blows my mind. I don't understand where all this is coming from. You have the dark bands right here, just like this filter, but not nearly as, as prominent. But then... You have like all this background that's like uh, I already tried stacking these once through LRGB combination and this background is just nasty like it's I I don't know what's going on I'm gonna assume it's my filters so I'm gonna replace the filters with some better quality filters so that's the LRGB once I'm done I uh, editing it and getting it as a final picture I'm not expecting much I am a little impressed with the actual you know galaxy in each one of these photos because I got some good data on the galaxy itself and it's not it, it's not like blown out or anything you can kind of see my guiding wasn't the best it could have been but not on all the pictures like this picture you got pinpoint stars but you can see quite a bit of detail so I will do my best to pull that detail out but I'm not really expecting too much. So let's go ahead and close these and I want to show you the issues that I had with my narrowband. So the HA looks absolutely great. Pinpoint stars, you can see all the gases. Looks absolutely great. It's the O3 that's really weird. And it's not really the center. But once you get out here, you get like these elongated stars. And I, I don't believe it's my filters or my back focus because these are both Antlia filters. They're supposed to be par par focal filters. So this this O3 picture should be as good as this hydrogen alpha picture. As you can see, there is no I mean none of these stars are elongated. They're all pinpoint all the way out to the edge. It might be a tiny, tiny, tiny amount, but that's not even visible to the naked eye. So I don't understand why why this one. I mean, you can see that they're they're elongated. They're 
and I went through, I thought it was a tracking issue. Like I didn't, like I missed a picture that had elongated stars in it or something. But I went back through with Blink and I removed any that weren't pinpoint. And then I stacked again and this is the result again. So I don't understand what's going on there. I mean, if any of you guys have any ideas, feel free to, to let me know. But yeah, so those are my pictures so far. I'm going to get them both edited. I have more hope for this one. Unfortunately, I'm going to have to deal with the elongated stars. And, and it's only... I just noticed that. It's... When you get out here, these are pinpoint. These are almost pinpoint. Well, why is that? But yet, when you look at the actual photo, you can see... Basically, this corner is okay, but then all the other three corners are not pinpoint. Maybe that's... Maybe I'm... My camera's tilted? I don't know. Maybe the filter inside there is loose and, and tilted? I don't know. I'm gonna have to check out my, my imaging train. But, I mean, I'm pretty happy with that. If it comes out really bad, I might just do a hydrogen alpha, just edit this one and have a pure red rosette nebula. But yeah, so those are my pictures. Uh, I am going to be redoing the whole image train on my telescope. I'm going to be adding an off-axis guider to it. I don't know when that's coming out because I already ordered it, but the off-axis guider is out of stock at the moment, so it may be a few weeks. But I'm hoping to get some better guiding because my guiding is usually about 0.7 to 1.1, which is... I mean, that's okay guiding, but it's not what I want. I want, you know, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. And I'm hoping an off-axis guider might be able to improve that, uh, improve on that uh, guiding. So I will be adding that soon enough. I'll show you guys. I'll do a video of the new imaging train and everything when everything comes in. But I will see you guys at the end of the video with the final pictures.